Malaysia is one of the most complex tropical rainforest ecosystems in the world. Although it's a relatively small country with a land area of 33 million hectares, the combination of its warm equatorial climate and the variation of its geographical, edific and climate features has endowed Malaysia with extremely rich plants and animal life forms. According to the UNFAO, 62.3% of its land area are under forest cover, and of that 18.7% is classified as primary forest, the most biodiverse and carbon dense form of forest. In spite of the fact that in recent years Malaysia has lost some of its forests to agricultural development and unmanaged exploitations by timber and palm oil farms. Between 1990 and 2010, Malaysia lost 8.6% of its forest cover. The forest is home to many animals and microorganisms that help the ecosystem thrive to make the world a more habitable place for humans to live in. Without them, we would face grave consequences of climate change. The sun bear of Borneo is the perfect example of the VVIP of the forest. They are known as the keystone species. Unfortunately, they are endangered. We interviewed the founder and chief executive officer of the Borneo Sun Bear Conservation Centre based in Sandakan Sabah, Mr Wong, for a better insight. Hi, uh, my name is uh, Wong Siu Ti. I am uh, from originally from Penang. I'm the founder and the chief executive officer of the Bonin Sambe Conservation Center based in Sanakan, Sabah. Um, I am a tropical biologist and, uh, and a, a tropical forest uh, ecologist and also a wildlife biologist. I come to Sabah for the very first time back in 1998 to study wild sun bears and this is how all my sun bear works started. It started with a few research trying to understand and trying to uh, know this very elusive bear species that live in our country called Malayan sun bears or Barang Madu. Back in 1998, sun bear was the least known bear in the world and there has been no study or whatsoever on this particular species. I was very fortunate and given this opportunity to study them in the rainforest and then, uh, so I got to, you know, see from my very first hand how they live in the forest, how they survive in the forest. And it really amazed me with a lot of findings that I found. But when I come out from the forest, I saw a horrible thing. Uh, in the forest, I saw wonderful things. When I come out from the forest, I saw another extreme. And another, another horrible extreme where uh, the forest has been cleared through logging activities, through uh, forest clearance, and then a land conversion into agriculture use and so on. And then there are many bears uh, being uh, poached. Uh, sun bear is a protected species in our country, but people still poach them for various reasons. Many of them, uh, especially the baby, are being kept as pets. Uh, when they are small, you know, they are very cute, but when they grow bigger and bigger, they are no longer cute. They end up being locked in small metal cage. And I feel this is very, very wrong for an amazing species, for a spectacular uh, species that locked up in a small cage by people. Okay, so this is not just for sun bear. This is applied to all wildlife that, that live in our country. You have to know that, you know, sun bears and other wildlife, they are forest dependent species. They live right. in the forest. They have to have forests in order to survive. So in the past, when our forest is vast, when our forest is contiguous, when our forest is intact, all of the wildlife live happily in our rainforest until humans come around so started from the 60s, um, there is a series of uh, deforestations or logging activity happens across West Malaysia, across Sabah and Sarawak, where vast forest has been cleared, uh, has been cleared for timber production because uh, timber is a very important natural resources and also a very important commodity to help the local economies. Our forest is very special because our forests produce very valuable, high quality tropical hardwood. All of the big trees that you're seeing, well, right now it's become so rare already, uh, uh, are all hardwood and fetch a lot of money in, in international or local timber market and therefore vast forest has been cleared. So with the forest being cleared, 
for timber productions later on being converted into agriculture like rubber plantation, oil plantation, acacia tree plantation and so on and so forth. The sun bears and other wildlife species that live in our forest lost their habitat forever. So by far the biggest threats for our wildlife sun bear included are deforestations and habitat loss. So they lost their home, they lost their habitat. Okay, so this one we know quite quite uh, quite a lot. Through years of study, we know that they are very important seed dispersers. Sun bears is a is a, is a, a omnivore species. They eat a lot of fruits and also a lot of invertebrates. You know, also a lot of invertebrates. And then uh, when they eat fruits, they ingest the seed of the fruits, like say wild durian. They swallow the seeds, and then the seed will pass through their uh, digestive uh, tracts and then a few hours later when the bears you know travel around the forest and then uh, the seed will come out in their feces and that process is called seed dispersal. Seed dispersal is extremely important process, ecological process in our forest uh, ecosystem because uh, we found out that you know the further away the seed being carried from the mother tree the higher the chances of survival. So, so in other words, sun bear plant trees in the forest, especially those big fruit uh, species like wild durian. You know, right. sun bear as a large mammal can swallow large seed and can carry and plant those uh, big trees with big seed with big fruits. So very, very important as seed dispersal. And then in addition, sun bear also considered as a forest doctor because one of the very uh, favorite food species, uh, food, uh, food that they like to eat is honey. And mm -hmm. in the forest, there are two kinds of honey that they can get hold of. One is from the Kalulut, the stingless bee. Yes. Stingless bee build their hive inside a hollow tree trunk of a big trees of a, of a, of a, of a hardwood species most of the time. And then a sun bear have to climb the trees really high up and then use their uh, canines and teeth and, 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 and claws rip apart the tree trunk and excavate a, 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 a tree hole or cavities and then and, and later on they get hold of the honeys and also you know whatever is that they can find like larvas uh, from the from from the from the uh, behind mm -hmm. and then uh, the cavities later be, you know will be will be slowly heal off the, the the tree will slowly close the, the cavity to a point where other species of wildlife like hornbills, flying squirrels and so forth and, and so on uh, find it useful, find it suitable for making their nests. So therefore, sun bears also make nests for other species like hornbill. Without sun bears, hornbill might be having troubles on, on finding it sufficient or enough uh, uh, nests uh, for them to uh, yeah, lay eggs, uh, raise their chicks and then propagate mm. their population. So, in other words, they are very important. Uh, um, oh, this is uh, this is yeah, this is this is what we call as a forest uh, engineer. Okay, yeah. Right. So they they make oh. nests for other species. And then just now when I mentioned uh, forest doctor, forest doctor is when the sun bears was eating on termites. Some termite species are known to attack live tree that like the micro serotermus. And then uh, when sun bears feed on this termite species, they actually control the termite population uh, so that the termite populations, the termite nests or termite colony do not explode and kill many trees in our forest. And therefore they keep the forest healthy. So this is the third ecological role that they play in the forest. The fourth ecological role that they play in the forest, they are forest farmer. Uh, by eating t uh, earthworms, say for example, they have to do a lot of diggings. Uh, by feeding on uh, other, you know, uh, soil borrowing uh, invertebrates, uh, insect like the cicada larva, they have to do a lot of digging. The process of digging, actually digging the soil, actually enhance the soil nutrient cycle, makes the nutrient rich soil on the top of the forest floor to the uh, soil very down under. And, and, and also and also you know make the area make the, the soil ready for seed germination. So in other words they play, they act like a farmer plowing the, the, the forest floor yeah. so that other tree species other seeds are easy to germinate. I have evidence that sun bears play important roles as food provider uh, by eating on termites on, on feeding on uh, earthworms, 
uh, by feeding on decay wood, you know, there is always something left behind because the sun bears are a messy feeder. They don't feed on, but they don't clean up everything uh, potential food items that they that they duck out for. So other species of animals like pheasants, like burning brown cuckoo, like uh, a mina, uh, these are bird species. Uh, and then mammal species like bearded pigs, wild boars may tag along the bears and then uh, follow the bears for this kind of feeding opportunity. So all in all, sun bear play many important ecological roles in the forest. And then it benefits many um, forest community, plants and animal species included. So a forest with uh, sun bears and a forest without sun bears is a different forest. So we need sun bears in order to keep the forest ecosystems complete, intact and healthy. That's why we need sun bears. Very important, we call sun bear a keystone species because their presence of sun bear will affect the survival of many, many species in the forest. There is no replacement, there is no substitute, there is no other animals that can do the roles of the sun bears. That's why we need sun bears in our forest ecosystem. Mm -hmm. The progress has been pretty good, I would say. You know, so far we have rescued, we have helped Sabah Wildlife Department rescue and take care uh, of uh, 65 bears over the last uh, 13 years. We are the uh, an NGO working in Sabah trying to like promote awareness, raise awareness of sun bears in Sabah and Malaysia and also across the world as much as we can. And then uh, we conduct research on wild sun bears and also with our captive sun bears. Uh, we educate the public, we have an education uh, uh, unit uh, at our center whose jobs or mission is to try to, you know, engaging with the general public, school groups and so on, trying to uh, deliver the message on how important are the sun bears, how important are our forests, so that everybody aware of our uh, conservation issue of sun bears and also our forests. Mm, I think this is uh, a weakness or failure in our education system where all of where the first 12 years of uh, uh, free education given by the governments failed to educate us about the importance of our forests, uh, about our wildlife in this country, so that you know many people growing up without the knowledge of how important, well, first, what are the wildlife in our country, what are the wild plants is in, in, in our forest. Secondly, is how important they are in the forest ecosystem. Say, for example, sun bears, you know, I mentioned that uh, they play many important ecological roles. You know, all of this were not being teach uh, in, our, in our school education systems. And therefore, in general, general public growing up without a lot of knowledge about our environment, about our forest, and our and about our wildlife. In other developed countries, this kind of environment knowledge or natural resources knowledge, yeah, are being teach uh, in the school curriculum. They will growing up knowing the importance of first of the environment, and then second about the importance of the forest and also the wildlife that live in our forest. Many many resources that we eat we use you know, all come from the forest. So we must uh, protect our forest. And in Malaysia, we are so blessed and, and, and fortunate to live in this area with a forest that filled with a lot of species. Our forest is known as a bio -like biodiversity hotspot. A forest with mega biodiversity means that there are so many species of wild plants and wild animals live in our forest per unit uh, compared to other countries and they are slowly disappearing because you know deforestation is happening um our forest is disappearing so so things like that so we must we must first understand or know about our forests in order to take everything that we we can to protect our forest our remaining forest Well, there's a lot. I think, you know, first of all, everybody should, should educate themselves about the knowledge of 
natural resources, about the environment. Second, about the facts of various wildlife species that we have, like the sun bears, orangutan, tiger, elephant, and so on and so forth. And then once you well are well educated about this kind of knowledge, then you can, you know, once uh, will start to care because without the knowledge, you do not know how to care. You do not know, you know, whether this is uh, important or not, whether it matters to your livelihood or not. You know, you can support the local NGO. You can support us by doing donations, by becoming a volunteer and so on and so forth. Uh, if we don't take action right now, when all of the species, forests gone and disappeared, then we will experience all the consequences like global climatic change, like severe weather patterns, like species extinction that will affect our livelihood, our survival, and definitely our future generations, survivors, and livelihood is just a matter of time. There's a lot already. Okay, say for example, severe weather patterns, lightning strikes, strong winds, uh, very, very, it's getting more and more common, okay? Uh, drought, yeah? Some areas, say for example, Klang very few years ago, uh, experiencing no water, you know, water shortage, uh, and, and things like that. And then, uh, so that is, that is happening. And then flood, for example, you know, severe weather patterns, either some places have lots and lots of rain to a point where it flooded and flooded and flooded, or some or some area have no rains where it becomes so dry and dry and dry and then uh, sometimes storms you know thunderstorms wind storms are, 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 are become more and more common i'm not sure whether you are aware of all this lightning strike and then a uh, wind storm that can blowing up you know uh, right. that kind of that, that kind of phenomenon you know it's getting more and more common uh, luckily, you know, although it's getting more and more common, but compared to other countries, say for example, Australia, you know, they're having this uh, forest fire last year and, and the year before. This is an unprecedented, never happened before. And right now, you know, just like few uh, last week uh, in Canada, where they, where they have the heat wave that, you know, one small town uh, recorded a record high temperature of 49.49.7 uh, degrees Celsius. That is killing heat. You know, yeah. you know, people can yeah, people can bake cookies in their car. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. <laughs> yeah, and then you know, with the North Pole and the South Pole, where there's a lot of glacier, where there's a lot of uh, iceberg are uh, slowly melting off. You know, and then uh, causes seawater rises. And, and we are experiencing slowly over here with a lot of, uh, say, for example, coastal area, uh, coastal villages, you know, fishing village uh, having flood, uh, flood uh, issues. Some uh, oceanic uh, islands, small islands like Tuvalu, they are facing uh, a crisis of the islands is disappearing, you know, is, is sinking. You know, say, for example, while well, close to our neighbors, uh, Jakarta, for example, Jakarta is sinking. You know, of course, one of the causes is because of the people in Jakarta is overusing the underground water. Another issue is because of um, uh, seawater rises, and it is happening. Yeah, it, although few centimeters every year, but the accumulations of seawater rises several centimeters every year, when you're talking about decades, it becomes significant. Yeah, sure. You know, like what I mentioned, those environmental issues uh, will affect everybody. Nobody can escape. And one of the very best example that we are experiencing right now is this COVID nineteen pandemic. Yeah, if the theory is if the theory is right, you know, it comes from uh, the the virus comes from wildlife, and then uh, because humans encroach wild habitat, and then we got close contact with wildlife species by eating them, by keeping them as pets, by destroying their home and so on and so forth. And then uh, the virus that used to live in the wildlife, that used to locked up in the forest interior that have no contact whatsoever with people, right now have the contact of people. And right now there are 7.8 billion of us on planet Earth and it is very, very easy to make things go wrong and in fact, very, very, many, many people in very, very 
short period of time and to a point we see this pandemic that we never experienced before in the history of mankind. If you want to know more about my work, you can visit yeah. our website at www.bsbcc.org.my. Thank you.